Hey y'all, welcome to a very special episode of Brave Kids Art Club. My name is Brad and today we are going on a field trip. So instead of you drawing an animal with me here in my studio, we're actually gonna go visit another artist in their studio and draw an animal with them. How does that sound? Awesome, I thought it sounded like fun. Well, let me introduce you to my friend Jeremy Slagle, who works as a graphic designer and illustrator in Columbus, Ohio. He's super creative and makes some really cool things. So let's go check out his studio. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Brad, welcome to the studio. This is where I work. I, uh, I have this really cool job where I get to draw stuff all day long. And the other cool part about it is, is that my uh, office is actually attached to the back of my house. So if you look right over here, you'll see that door right over there goes into the rest of the house. Uh, but this is my studio space and this is where I get to collect a lot of my fun stuff. One of my problems is I love old cameras, so this is where I kind of keep my camera collection. But this is kind of where I meet with clients. So when I have somebody that needs an illustration done or needs graphic design work done, they come and they meet me here at my house, at my studio. and we get to work together. When I built this, one of the things I always wanted, even from when I was little, is I always wanted to have a spiral staircase. My dream came true when I got to build this house. So uh, I'll take you upstairs and I'll show you what I'm working on and do a little tutorial with you, show you how I draw some of my characters. By the way, this is my beast. She's one of my favorite coworkers. This is Scout. She's a miniature poodle and she's awesome. You ready to go upstairs and work? Yeah, let's go upstairs and work. So this is my office space. This is where I get to hang out all day long. This is my desk right here. I get to draw pictures and do cool stuff, but almost everything I do starts on paper with a pen and pencil. And this is really kind of what started me into doing illustration in the first place. When I was little, I used to draw all the time. I never stopped drawing. It was like my favorite thing. And so like even in school, in elementary and middle school and high school, um, art class was totally my favorite place to be. Love being in the class, love drawing all the time, and frankly got my best grades in that class. So I kind of knew all along that that's what I was gonna do. And so now I get to work here and uh, spend time drawing and collecting fun stuff. Like here's some logos and some projects I've designed. I did this logo for a, a pizza company. You'll see on my package design, I do lots of illustration work on this as well. You'll see that that's something that I do a lot with my work. Uh, for instance, here's another package design where I did the illustrations and the drawings for the different ingredients on the packaging. I'm a bit of a Star Wars nerd. I've got my stuffed animals. There's Hobbes from my favorite comic book, Calvin and Hobbes. And then my daughter made me this Chewbacca. And this is a little chinchilla puppet that somebody gave me. And the reason they gave me this chinchilla pu uh, puppet is because I illustrated a children's book called Chin Up Chinchilla with a friend of mine. Her name is Beth Stafford and she's a really, really amazing a uh, friend of mine and great author. And this is the book right here. And um, I'm gonna show you today how to draw this main character from Chin Up Chinchilla and show you how to do it yourself. All right, so you've got your pencil, you've got an eraser, you can use any eraser, um, even the eraser on the back of your pencil will work just fine. And uh, a marker and some paper. One thing I will tell you is that if you're drawing with a marker or using any kind of marker, make sure you have multiple sheets of paper underneath your drawing because otherwise these tend to bleed through and end up on your dinner table, which nobody likes. For my book, Chin Up Chinchilla, basically we have uh, two characters in it and one of the characters is this sad chinchilla. And if you, if you get a chance to read the book, the book is all about how um, you know things might not be going too well for him, but but when we are kind to people and we love people, then we have what's called empathy, which means we do things for them to help cheer them up and help them feel better. So our character in this book uh, sometimes goes through some difficult things, like he loses his pet or maybe his sandwich was soggy and wet. I'm sure if, if you uh, ever have to pack a lunch, you've had that happen before. Maybe you've broken a delicate lamp. And so there's all these different situations where um, this chinchilla is sad and uh, or maybe it's something that somebody said to him that hurt his feelings. So we're going to draw this chinchilla today and uh, I'll show you a really, really simple way to do it. And what's really cool is that drawing this chinchilla is a great way to learn how to draw other characters as well. So what I like to do is, with lots of my characters is start with a really simple shape. So si since chinchillas are kind of soft and fuzzy, 
Uh, and they, if you ever look at pictures of a chinchilla, well, first off, a chinchilla is kind of like, it's kind of like a, got the body of a bunny, but the ears of a mouse. Um, they're really kind of fluffy, uh, soft creatures. So starting with a, uh, a shape that's very soft, that doesn't have lots of sharp edges. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what I call a bean shape. It kind of looks like a jelly bean or like a kidney bean or something like that. So, so in the center of your paper, go ahead and draw a bean. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the top part of the bean smaller than the bottom. So the bottom part of the bean is gonna be a little bit bigger. So go ahead and you're just gonna draw This shape, this is almost like a C shape here. And then we're gonna bring the, the, the top of the, the bean in a little bit here at the top like this. And then it's gonna come back out and then the bottom of the bean is gonna get a little bit bigger. Don't worry about if you didn't do a line right. That's why we're starting with a pencil. So go ahead and just, if you need to kind of redraw that or get it where it needs to be, then go ahead and just redraw over your lines a little bit. Um, the top part of the bean is gonna be his head. So, uh, and this is kind of his body area. So what I like to do is if you think about, our chinchilla is gonna be looking that way. So his tummy would really be right in this area. So I'm gonna kind of draw an oval here for his soft fuzzy tummy. It's gonna go right about there. And then we're gonna add uh, his snout. The, because he's gonna be looking this direction. So I'm gonna kind of bring this in like this and then up to a little bit of a point like that. So kind of have a nice uh, shape here. This kind of makes almost like an S where it goes up and then down and then up a little bit again. And then this does the same thing, but in reverse. So it kind of is like an S the other direction. So once you've got that, we're gonna draw a uh, an eye and the eye kind of sits right sort of in the middle of his head right in this area right here we're going to draw a really light circle and then inside that circle we'll draw another circle in it kind of down towards the bottom right hand corner of that circle also um, the, we're going to make the base of him or where the floor is where he's sitting we're going to actually put that right about here. So I'm going to draw a line that goes straight across the bottom. And this is where his feet, this is kind of the floor or the plane that he's sitting on. So um, basically uh, the next step will be that we're going to draw some ears. And so the, he's kind of a, in a sad mood. So we're going to make his ears kind of like they're going back. If you have a puppy um, or a dog especially or any other kind of animals, um, a lot of times you'll see that when they're sad, their ears kind of go back. So we're gonna just kind of show his ears going back like this. All right, and then we can create an S shape, another little S shape right in here to kind of fill in that ear a little bit. So, cause on this side, you're gonna see the inside of his ear. On the other side, you're not gonna see it. We don't wanna show his whole eye because ch chinchillas have kind of chubby cheeks. So. Um, if you kind of think about it, we're gonna put a little line here, almost like this is an, a sun coming up over a hill. Um, we're not gonna, we don't have to erase the bottom part yet, but we're just gonna draw a line here so that his cheeks are kind of uh, sitting in front of his eye a little bit. Then we're going to draw another S shape that goes up above his eye and kind of follows the curve of his snout down to the tip of his nose like that. So. We're gonna go up and then just follow that curve right around to the other side. And then we'll do the same thing from here. We're just gonna keep this going down and attach it to the bottom. So we basically kind of created this, this shape. And this is kind of like, if you see a lot of animals, um, they have like a lighter color on their face than they do on the rest of their body. And that's kind of what we're, we're showing here. So next thing we'll do is right where this part is connecting, we're gonna draw a little dark, darker line. That's the tip of his nose. And then we're gonna bring that line down a little bit and then we're gonna do a little sad, sad uh, frown right there. So now we've got a sad frown. And then on the inside of his body, because chinchillas have really muscular legs, but they're all kind of part of their body, they don't really stick out like a giraffe or other animals that have long, uh, really defined legs do. The, the shape of our chinchilla is going to have his legs are gonna be built right into his body, the, the, at least the top parts of his legs. So we're just gonna draw a, like a backward C shape here. It kind of comes like this. This is his right leg. 
and then we're going to do another one that kind of comes around like this. So again, because his body is facing that way, you're going to see this side of his haunches, but this side's going to kind of be around the backside. So we actually want this, his tummy to be the front part of his body. And then we'll darken this line a little bit coming out from here and here, just like that. And then we're going to do an M shape, uh, like a, almost like a cursive M, but with three loops. So we're going to go one, two, three, and then do the same thing over here. We'll go one, two, three, and those are his toes. So they've got really strong upper legs and really tiny, skinny lower legs. Um, same with the top, uh, their, their, their front legs are really small too. So we're going to just do two shapes. We're going to do uh, kind of almost like eyelashes, but going down like this, right? So, so two curved lines that kind of come down from the sides like, like that. And then we're going to do two kind of sharper ones that, that meet it right here. Um, and whenever I draw this, it reminds me of like, uh, eyes closed. It almost looks like this is an eyelid closed and this is the eyebrow coming down, but uh, kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking for. It's, it's two, two curved lines this way and then two like deeper curved lines below it, just like that. And then sort of the way we did it down here, but we're going to make these a little bit more pointy. We're going to go one, two, three, and one, two, three. And there are his front legs. They kind of look like a, uh, almost like, uh, I'm trying to think of the like a, a kangaroo or a, a koala or some of the, a lot of these animals that have these really tiny front, front legs and really, really powerful back legs. So um, we're also going to add an eyebrow in here to kind of emphasize his sadness. So we're just going to add another eyebrow shape right there. And then chinchillas have really bushy tails. So we're going to just start almost equal to the top of his head. We're going to draw a, another S shape. It's going to come towards him come down like this and then right back in like that. So that's the one side of his tail. You can kind of see it's a, it's a S, but it's flipped the other direction. And we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to start at this point up here, but instead of coming all the way over, we're going to just come in a little bit and then we're going to come down, follow that shape. And then we're going to come right back in like that. So now we've got a chinchilla in his tail, probably make that a little bit fluffier. So I can always redraw that a little bit. To where I want to get the line right. I find that most of the time when I put a line down, I have to correct it a little bit. Nobody's perfect in their drawing. So sometimes you kind of just have to go, you know, I want that to be a little bit, a little bit more rounded or a little bit fuller. So you can kind of create that in there. So once you've gotten to this point, um, you know, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add a little highlight. So we'll add another little, little circle here. So here's his, his, here's that eye like that. So when you've gotten to this point, um, you can go ahead and grab your marker and we're going to only trace the lines that we want to keep in this drawing. So um, one of the things that I find, especially when it comes to inking, is that it's good to turn your paper. Um, if you think about the way your hand moves, it works really, really well this way, but doesn't necessarily work really well the other way. So I'm going to turn my paper a little bit as I do this and I'm going to just work on filling in some of these some of these darker out, outer lines. So we're going to just get the whole outline of our character. So we've gotten that line there and then we're going to come down like that. I'm going to flip it this way a little bit so I can get that shape there like that. So kind of gotten the out, outline shape of him like that. And then we can draw this line straight across. from one toe to the other. Next, we're going to just draw those loops in. Those toes. And then we're going to draw the top part of the leg here. Next, we can draw the eye. We'll draw the outer part of the eye first like that. And then we'll draw the inner part of the eye. Remember that we're not going to draw that bottom part that goes behind the hill of his cheek. So we're going to leave that part down there. And then you can go ahead and fill in that, that eyeball. Same thing down here. If you want to fill in those toes when you do it, you can do that as well. 
right? So next, I'm going to do his back ear. Then I'm going to do his front ear. We can do his tail. Like that. We'll do his nose and his mouth. We can outline his front, cute front arms. Like that. Sad eyebrow. Now something I like to do when I'm trying to draw an inner line, like these outer lines are really, really supposed to be bold because they're kind of showing the whole shape of the character. But for these inner lines, since they're a softer line, what I do a lot of times is I just kind of very lightly draw and sometimes make little dots to kind of show that line off a little bit lighter than the rest because we don't want those to be strong, really strong lines. So you can kind of lightly do, it's hard to do with, uh, with a Sharpie, but, but um, if you do it real light and you kind of keep those lines going like that, it kind of just gives you a little bit of a sense that it's not as strong or powerful or, or an outline of the character. And then we can go ahead and add some lines in here that kind of gives the idea to whoever's looking at it that this is a hairy character. Now, you don't have to do hair all over a character. You can do this in just certain places and our minds are able to figure out that that's just a sense or a highlight of the fact that the character is hairy and furry without having to go overboard with too much fur on him. So something kind of like that. So once you've gotten to this point, go ahead and grab your eraser or the one that's on your pencil. And we're just gonna go ahead and erase all of our pencil lines. There we go. And we've got a chinchilla. Thanks again for visiting my studio today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that if you really love drawing and it's something that, that's, that you're passionate about and something that brings you lots of joy, that you'll seriously consider maybe doing it for your job someday. The best way to do it and to prepare for that is to just keep drawing. Just draw all the time. Grab a sketchbook and a pencil, take it with you, take it to the zoo and draw the animals or uh, just take it where and draw imaginary fun stuff. Whatever you happen to enjoy, whatever makes you happy. Be sure to just keep doing it. That's the best thing you can possibly do if you want to be an artist or a designer or an illustrator someday. And remember, always be brave, be creative, and most importantly, be you. Thanks again. Thank you, Jeremy. Well, was that cool or what? That was super nice of him to show us around his studio and then also show us how to draw his chinchilla character from his book, Chin Up Chinchilla. My kids and I actually have that book and we love it. If you want to pick up a copy of that book yourself or learn about any of the other books that he's coming out with, all you have to do is go to happycargobooks.com. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please, if you like this video, subscribe, like, so we can do more of these, and I'll see you guys next time.